from Patterns for Pirates, and I'm going to sew up the zipper on the new vintage jumper. I know a lot of people get super intimidated by zippers. We're going to do it a super, super simple way, so get ready to jump in and love sewing zippers. All right, guys, I'm here to show you another way you can put in the zipper if you don't want to do the basting method. Um, this one is a little bit quicker, but it can be a little bit more challenging if you're a beginner. So you can take that into consideration. I have a skirt this time. And I have the side seams just pinned. I have it marked where my zipper stops. So you want to line your zipper up with the very top so you have a seam allowance up there. And without stretching anything, you want to mark where your zipper stops. So not the very ends, but exactly where it stops unzipping. From this point, I'm just going to sew the seam allowance with a half inch seam allowance. My The skirt is cut on the bias, so I have some more stretch here. So I'm going to use a stretch stitch. Use the lightning bolt stitch here. I'm using a stretch velvet on this one. It's a really fun little um, spider web print that my daughter really, really liked. She loves holiday themed clothes and so um, this is kind of like a Halloween-y <laughs> print. Alright, so I have that seam sewn up partially. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to my iron and I'm going to press my seams open. I left these edges unfinished because um, this is not going to unravel, but if your fabric will unravel, you want to finish these edges. And it's really the easiest to finish them before you even sew the side seams. But you can finish them now as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press these open, and then when I get to the spot where I didn't sew, I'm going to press those half inch to the wrong side, just like this. Okay, I'm back from pressing my seams, and since my fabric has quite a bit of stretch, I'm using a stretch velvet, I added some knit interfacing here. So um, I put it with the stretch, which is this way, so it's going to keep it from stretching vertically at all, which is great for putting in a zipper. It also makes it hold its press a little bit better, actually much better. So if you have um, a less stable fabric like I do, you're going to want to use some knit interfacing on there so that your fabric doesn't stretch out and so that you can press it nicely and neatly. Okay, what we're going to do now is I like to unzip my zip and what we're going to do is pin it on. So with an invisible zipper, you want your folded fabric to go almost all the way to that center point, and so it kind of closes up as you zip. I'm going to just put in a few pins. Making sure I get it as precise as I can. Some people like to use other things besides pins here, like glue sticks, stay tape, to hold it in place really nicely. I usually just pin it.
Just gonna stick a pin right where it stops as well. Okay, I know where my zip stops. And I need to kind of come across and go up the other side. You can sew your zipper from the right side or the wrong side, whichever you find easiest. I almost always sew my zip from the right side because I care more about the way my stitches look on the front side versus the back. But if it helps you to be able to see the zipper and sew it on the wrong from the wrong side, that's fine. So if you're going to sew it from the wrong side, you're ready to pop on to your machine as long as you have the zipper clip on. This just helps you be able to get in really tight to that zipper where your regular foot has these which kind of get in the way. Zipper fit is a must, especially on an invisible zipper where you're wanting to get it nice and tight. Since I prefer to sew from the top side, I'm going to flip mine over and I'm going to add pins on this side and remove the other pins. You can skip that step if you want. If you know you want to sew from the wrong or the right side, you can just go straight into putting the pins on the right side. But a lot of times, um, especially for a beginner, it's easier to pin from the wrong side. And as long as you're careful as you're repinning, it's much easier than pinning from the front without having anything to guide you from the back. So if you're a beginner, that extra step could be well worth your frustration. You just go ahead and and pinning from the back first where it's nice and easy to see. And then all I have to do is pin it from the front and then remove them from the back. I don't have to worry about realigning it because it's still held in place from all my pins in the back. Okay, so here's what we look like now. I did pick an orange zipper because I thought you'd be able to see it maybe a little bit easier on the video. So I'm going to leave my zip unzipped and I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to zip it up just a little bit more. I prefer to sew mostly with it zipped up. I think it's easier. So I'm just going to sew a little bit down and then I'll be zipping my zip up so that I can sew the most of it with my zip zipped up. Just using a normal straight stitch here. I use that interfacing so it should not have any stretch, so I shouldn't be worried about it popping or anything like that. Your zipper is not going to ever stretch no matter what fabric you're putting it on. So you should always be able to sew in your zip with a regular straight stitch. 
Okay, so now that I'm getting pretty close to my zip, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift my foot. My needle is down, so I'm not losing my spacing on my um, stitches. I will often grab a seam ripper, and I'll just stick it through the loop, and to help me, it really helps me um, be able to get the zip zipped up because my finger is much fatter than the seam ripper. And now you can see it kind of closes up. That's exactly how I want it to look. Once I'm done, right, for the invisible zip. So now I'm just gonna sew all the way down, over, and all the way back up until I get a little bit closer to the zipper again, and I will move the zipper. fabric is very slippery, <laughs> but I think my daughter will love, love this little jumper. Okay, I'm getting to where I have my zipper stopped, so I'm just going to pull it out. My needle's down while I pivot. I'm just going to go straight across the zipper, go nice and slow. You don't want to break your needle going through the zipper. And again, needle down, foot up, pivot, and then take off going the other way. It's really important to use interfacing on knit fabrics because a lot of times if you don't, you won't feel like you're stretching, but it'll stretch down this way and then up this way, and your zipper won't look straight. Which we never want. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to my zipper and my top, so what I'm going to do is lift up my foot with my needle down, and I'm just going to unzip it past the foot. Again, I always have my trusty, um, what is this called, seam ripper, and it just kind of helps me get it down nice and easily, it fits much nicer than my finger does, and sew the rest of the way. my preferred method on putting in zips. I think it's nice and easy, but when I was a beginner I really liked the basting method because it kept everything um, nice and neat for me. So whichever one you prefer you can go ahead and use. It closes up so nice and neat and you see that little zipper pull. That little orange will pop out when she's moving. And you have your seam allowance at the top for attaching the waistband. I hope that helps um, get over some of those fears of the zipper. They're really not bad, especially if you do all of the prepping, like interfacing, pressing really nicely, pinning very carefully. The actual sewing is just a, a you know, a little rectangle pretty much. It's nice and easy. Alright guys, I can't wait to see your zippers. And I hope it was nice and easy and frustration free for you. And don't forget to share with us on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you like to share your sewing makes.